I'm all short. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Color Brown Podcast. I'm your host, Negra. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and follow us on Instagram. Before we start, you already know, i got to give a shout out to my sponsors, L.A. Kush. Make sure you use promo code NEGRA40 at the L.A. Kush Sunset location only. And also, you already know, royalty, honey, keep it hard, guys. Shout! And on today's episode, we have Linwood. What's up, girl? Thank you for having me. No, of course. Thank you for coming. Yeah. I honestly, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm sure everybody's super excited. Everybody's gonna be excited to even he- hear your story. Yeah, true. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. Okay, so let's start. Let's start. So, where are you from? I don't obviously don't mean a gang or anything. Like, yeah. you know, like where did you grow up? Obviously, your name is Linwood. So, yeah. where did you grow up? Do you have, you know, your mom, your brothers, sisters? Like, tell me about your how you grew up. So, I grew up in Linwood. Um, uh, we moved in there. I still remember when I was like eight years old. So I got raised there. Where were you uh, born? In East LA. Ah, okay. So you That's from right. East LA? Yeah. You moved to Linwood. No, from East LA, we bounced to Cudahy. We were there, and then my dad decided to buy a house in Linwood. Oh, nice. and, okay. Yeah, and we ended up in Linwood. So, um, and I grew up with brothers and sisters, both parents. Oh, good. You know, okay. Lovely life. But, you know, as you get older, you start seeing, like, problems in the house. And it starts affecting you yes. as a kid. And a lot of the times we feel like it doesn't affect our kids, but we really do affect our kids. And um, everything was lovely, though. They were good to us. You had we love. went on vacations. I remember all the good things because I don't always want to bring up the bad things. I always bring up the trauma, but I never bring up like the good things, you know? So tell us your favorite vacation that you went on with your family. Um, to, um, Yosemite park. Uh, I never been. Never. No. Oh, you should go. It's beautiful. Is yeah. it the one with the big long trees? Yes. Okay. Okay. And that big waterfall. Ah. Beautiful, peaceful. We went camping. So it was, it was really, really good. Um, but I will notice patterns that every time we will go out, there was always between my parents. You know, mm-hmm. and until I think I hit like 12, 13, I, it started affecting me. I was my mom's scapegoat, you know. So she would go and tell you all her problems kind of vibes? Not all her oh, problems. Take your problems out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. She would take out all her problems on me and, you know, that's my mom, I love her. And I'd be like, ah, she's just probably mad. But then it just got deeper and deeper and deeper and, you know. Like abusive. Yeah, you can say, yeah. Okay. Can you recall what were your parents arguing about, like, little shit? Or, like, was it, like, super serious things? Or I think it was more like that. I recall it's like, you never helped me. I'm always doing shit on my own, you know? And, I, you know, and as a kid, I would be like, well, f- my dad works. He works construction, and he's a hard worker. He provides. They got cars. They have a house, you know? Uh-huh. Vacation. Like, like que mas she, she, Yeah. And, um... But now as an adult, as a mother, I'm like, like you, see, you I, saw, you yeah, saw. I felt it like, oh, OK, now I understand where she comes from, you know. If so I ask, what are your parents first generation here or are they or were they immigrants coming over here from Mexico? Or? Immigrants coming over here. Well, my mom is El Salvadorian and okay. my mom and my dad is Mexican. OK, yeah. Like your mom's crazy. Oh, yeah. That's where She's you get the wild. fucking look from. I, I think so. <laughs> That's very mellow. OK. She was. You know how they cross over? Mm. My, not re- I know my mom always talked about que, oh, crucé y me quedé dormida en, en, like, in the dirt. And, I, you know? We so she probably really, had more struggle than your dad. Yeah. And you know what's a trip? They never really talked to us about it. I will always hear it at family parties or family reunions. Like, no, te acuerdas, remember? And I'm like, damn, like, that shit's deep. I've heard a lot of deep shit from them. But, um, yeah, they made it out here and now. Uh, I'm glad they did. I'm here. I'm, yeah, that's you know, right. That's we're right. We're living right out here. Your mom was a homemaker and your father worked construction. Right? Yeah. And she well, bas- my mom worked too. She worked um, cleaning houses. That's right. Yeah. So basically, so. like, they were fighting, like, because he, she felt like he wasn't helping inside the mm-hmm. home or, like, dealing with you guys as, like, helping her with the kids, like, the homework. Yeah. Or, like, lava los trastes, no haces nada dentro de la casa. You know, just, you, I get out of work and I still have mm-hmm. to cook, clean, exactly. deal with the kids, and you just get out of work and you probably have a beer. Yeah, and then my dad would just get home, sit under the tree. We had a lemon tree with his tequila bottle, a gusto, and then he'll be like, all right, I'm going to go to the gym. Mm-hmm. Oh. And my so, mom in the garage washing, cleaning. Yeah. And, you know, the typical 
Mexican household. I, I'm I'm gonna call it a Mexican household because sure. I don't really know. Yeah. yeah, let's say Latino well, household because Latino, I feel like yeah. any Latino is the same way. Like true. You know, I feel I feel like well, maybe not. I feel like maybe every household is kind of like that, you know. After this, she has to go home and do the laundry. Yeah, and I'm gonna talk shit. Ah, fool, you never helped me, kind of vibes. So, yeah, yeah. and you said you now that you're older, you understand I feel it. it. Okay, I, I feel it, and I see where all her frustration came from. But I still felt that it wasn't fair for her to take everything out on you. And I know she did it to my other siblings, but it was more like. Towards me. Are you the middle, oldest? I'm the oldest daughter. I have an older brother, okay. but I'm the oldest of the girls. For sure. Yeah. So, you know, I helped out my mom while she go to the store, take care of the babies. I basically helped her, like, raise from my sister. I think she's, like, 35, I think, or 30. I helped her with all of the babies because I wanted to, too, you know? That was your little but, sister. Yeah. Um, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? I'm going to be 45 this year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, 40s is good. Hell yeah. You're right? Hell yeah. I feel like I'm 20. Well, I don't ever <laughs> want to be 20, bitch. Oh, I killed her. That was terrible. Yeah, I know it was. But, um, yeah, so it was like that. And then until she started getting more, like, aggressive, like, yelling and... Cállate, ya me tienes harta, me caes mal. Ay. And it got deeper and deeper. And I was like, what? Me caes mal is a lot. Yeah. And um, she would be like... Lárgate de aquí. I don't want to see you here. So I will go to the backyard. And I guess she felt like she still needed to take out more anger. And she would be like, didn't I tell you I don't want to see you here? And I'm like, okay, what do I do? Fuck, where am I going to go? So I remember, I still remember, girl, vividly, like walking out the gate. And you're well, 12, 13. I was like about right there. I was like about 14. Okay. When, you know, because I wouldn't leave the house. So I hit the street. Made a right, f discovered the park, and I just started sitting there by myself. So that was a neighborhood, and people would be like, hey, what's up? Hey, why are you out here? And started smoking weed. You know, and I was like, hey, they like me. They with me, man. I'm going to kick it here more often. Because they, 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 they liked you. Yeah. It's what you, it's what you needed. Mm -hmm. So and then that's how it started off. And then I just got introduced to the streets, and sometimes I would leave. Ain't trying to hear her. I would bust one of my dad moves. Shit, I'm gone. Every, I'm, so now it was just easier for you. It was easier for me, you know? Yeah. Um, and then at 15, um, I got introduced to meth. We, you know what I mean? They were like, we, let's try something else. We tried acid. We tried coke. But then back then it was speed. Mm -hmm. Remember, mm -hmm. it was in meth. It was it was still considered meth, but it was made different. So I tried it and I liked it. Um, I liked the feeling. Do you remember the Do you remember the first time? Did you yeah. sniff it? I sniffed it. I was at the park. We were in the restroom park, and we sniffed it. It was four of us. Racked it, sniffed it, and I'm like, I don't feel shit. All right, well, we're all going home. It was after school. Got home and I'm like, oh, shit. I felt like a rush. Like, I felt happy. I felt alert. I, I didn't feel sad. I was just like, damn, I like this shit. And I and ever since then, I, I was sniffing and sniffing. And maybe when I was like 20, I started smoking. I tried it. Who introduced you to smoking? Um, I see one of the homies in, in, on the cut that were hitting the pookie. And I'm like, what's that, fool? He's like, the pookie, dog. But what is it? They're like, it's speed. You want to hit it? And they're like, nah, we're not going to give it to you, Smiley. Nah, fool, I want to hit it. I want to hit that shit. And they helped me. They held it for me. They rotated it. And I'm like, <laughs> and the higher, the high was different. Completely different. Completely different. And, and, and there was. Did you graduate high school? Um, I was class of 97. So I got kicked out mm -hmm. and I decided to go back to school because deep inside, I knew I wanted to have a profession. I wanted to be a registered nurse. Uh -huh. So I still went to school and I graduated in 99. Okay. I, I never gave up on shit, you know? I try and I try and I try. So, yeah, yes. Yes, yes. And then I went to college. and Even though you were smoking meth? Even though I was a tweaker. I would go to the restroom, f the pookie, go back to class. Hey, I, and, I understand. And, and, and you know what I mean? Sometimes I didn't want to hit the pookie. You know, your mind's telling you, no, bitch, stop. But your body is immune to that shit. Your body's like, no, bitch, you need this shit feel awake, feel normal, you know? I do. Yeah. At, so, uh, so from the age of 15 to 20, you still didn't have any kids? At 25. 
Okay. So you were just kind of doing your thing. You were, yeah. you were getting high. You were, what did you work? Um, yeah, I was a CNA. Okay. Yeah. So, I worked, I was out there still busting missions. I like that. You know, I grew up like that, like out there. Well, your like, mom sent you to the streets. So what else yeah. did you, what else, you yeah. know? And she'll take me back, but I was introduced, like I said, and I was like, I'd rather be out here than be in misery in here, hearing her yell all the time. So, um, yeah, I, I started out there. And I was not ever from a gang, but I did some shit, you know? Mm -hmm. My thing was like carjacking fools. Because I remember when I used to live in the streets, guys would, would pick up on me, them nasty, perverted ones when I was young. Hey, get in the car, get in the car. And uh, how old were, did you live in the streets? Well, how old were you? I, I started at 15. So you decided to actually stay in the streets. Mm, my mom, both. I'd rather sometimes be out there and sometimes my mom will kick me out. Okay. So, um, but I felt peace in the streets. You know what I'm saying? I, you know what I mean? By I do. That, you know? And I just... I loved it out there. Nobody was telling me shit. I didn't have to hear no hurt bullshit. So um, I met a lot of people in the streets, like homeless, people that were running the streets. And I just started doing shit with them. And but started carjacking was your thing. Yeah, and I did it by myself. I think that's why I've never been to prison. Facts. Or, or, or got busted. Always by myself. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> I would just go ask for a little toy. Hey, let me borrow the toy. All right, cool. Just run back. And I'll just stand by pay phones. You know, I'm like, I know I'm going to get picked up. I'm young. They're perky. You know, I'm all like, <laughs> boom. Hey, what are you doing out here? You want to you wanna get in? Hell yeah. Your car is dope as hell. I'm going to get in. And I'll take them to the alley. You know, and I know how to play the role a little bit. Like, them touch me. And I'll be like, you know what? That shit. Get off the fucking car. You know, one time I got caught up. I almost got caught up, negra. I swear. But he had a low jet. Yeah, we took his shit. And I guess I don't know how the low jet shit works. Then we heard the choppers and everything. And we left the car behind. And I was hiding at um <laughs> at my neighbor's house. I went back to my block um, on Pope Street. Shout out to Dora. <laughs> so they, they Dora. Like, you have to talk to my dad. I'm like, por favor, don Emilio, por favor. <laughs> Oh, hey, Susana, you're always into problems. He's like, go get in the garage. That's nice. Yeah. That's you know? nice. And shout out to them. He did. Yeah. Or else you probably would have gotten busted. Dude. So then it's safe to say that all of your people from the block knew you were like a dog. Yes, sir. Yeah, they will all talk shit about me. Ah, yeah, viste a la Susana. <laughs> Susana's puffing. And I'm like, uh, bitch, I'm over there racking it up with your son. Yeah. Too, though. <laughs> yeah, viste the neighbors talking about you. I'm like, we can't. Yeah, give a f yeah, yeah. Um, I had a neighbor that would follow me everywhere, and I she caught me around the corner. She's like, ¿Dónde vas? ¿A dónde vas? ¿Algo me va a dar right there? No, pues entonces no pregunte. Like, she was always on my shit just so she could go talk about me with people on the block. You know? Do your parents still live there? Yeah, my, well, they got divorced. Okay. Um, yeah. It was finally read this question. During your time of letting these fools pick you up and trying to and trying to hit a lick, did anyone actually, like, get to hit? Mm -mm. Type shit? No, because I always had a toy with me. So they would get scared, you know? And you just hop out. No, they were all scared. I kind of, because you know what? I, I kind of feel like men that pick up on girls like that are kind of like weenie ass fools. And a lot of them were married. It would trip out, right? On one of them, I, I, we would strip the shit afterwards. And then in the glove compartment, there was an engagement ring. Dude, that shit was worth three thousand something. <laughs> You're up smoking tonight. <laughs> Hell yeah! In the back seat, there was a stroller. <gasps> so, oh, and then another thing, I would always take their wallet. Yeah. So I would always check like if they had money. And this motherfucker like was the one that was like, "That's what you get. Bitch. You're trying to marry this, bitch, but you're trying to fuck me. You're Perfect you cool. got her pregnant, and and I took out a picture, and they have a family picture like this. She's pregnant. <laughs> oh well, I'm sorry, girl. You ain't gotta have no stroller and no ring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's down now. Yeah. <laughs> fuck it. I didn't have a heart back then. I didn't give a fuck. I, I, you know, we're we're numb to life. We're, I was numb. We're numb. We, you know, the drug does that to you. You yeah. don't feel things. You either yeah, but, feel too much or you don't feel at all. True. But even sober, I didn't give a fuck. I mean, well, were you really ever sober though? Like yeah. the drug was always true. in you. That is true. You know? Yeah. Like you probably didn't smoke for two days, but that shit's still in you. <laughs> that shit's still in yeah, me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? The demon's still in me. Um, but yeah, I tried stopping too. 
You know, I tried stopping when I got pregnant. Um, so through, so 15 to 25 is when you got pregnant mm -hmm. and you're working or you say you're like a, C a CNA. Mm -hmm. I, well, at that time I wasn't working. Okay. Yeah. But I, for all my life, I've always worked as a CNA. Um, I got pregnant and I was living with my mom at that time. And but she, it was always an on and off shit. She would accept me, throw me out. Mm -hmm. Como que it was a, a thrill for her to do that. So anyways, I got pregnant and Everybody was like, are you going to keep your baby? You know, first pregnancy. And I'm like, and you're out of control. And I was like, F like, I don't I don't believe in abortions. I really don't. You know, like if I'm out there hood riding and I got pregnant, then I, I, don't, it I don't. It is what it is. And, um, and I mean, I you at least like the food. So, you know, at least. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> You're on no. <laughs> no, you know, it was just like a a, a one-time thing, and I got pregnant. <gasps> so yeah. you got pregnant just after that having sex time. with him yeah. one time. Yeah, but you know, I was always seeing him, and I didn't, I didn't ever told him I was pregnant ever. <gasps> I hid it. Oh my god! Everybody was like, "Who's a baby daddy?" I'm like, "Oh, I don't know, I don't know." <gasps> really? Yes. Hey, how was that for you? Like telling people that you don't know who your baby daddy is? It was embarrassing, even though you knew. It was, it was embarrassing. And then when my baby was born, I told um, my homeboy Spooky, he was my best friend at the time. I still talk to him. He was my best friend at the time. I'm like, I have a baby by your cousin. And he's like, what? So everybody, like, the next day came to my house, the, the baby daddy's uh, mom, the tia, his mom, just to go see the baby, you know. And obviously they wanted to see if it looked like him. And obviously my son looks like him, you know. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Yeah. Hey, that's so crazy. Like, no, like... They really want, at least they came to be like, okay, you know, to accept the baby if it is his. Like, yeah. And they want maybe wanted to be part of the baby's life or no. They wanted to, but then it was like, they will hear cheese and oh, Smiley said que she don't want you to be around. And I never said that shit because I know that my family was never there for me like that, that I didn't want that same cycle for my kids. So I always been around like their family, you know, to mm -hmm. try to accept my son, but they were never there. And what about I him? What about him? Him, not menos. Yeah. Yeah. I told him, I go, don't give me money. I ain't even tripping. Just be there for my son. Oh, yeah, yeah. He came a few times, kicked it, seen him. And the last time he seen him with me, he was nine months old. Oh, wow. Yeah. And he seen him again about four years ago. And my son told me they were taken away. So he was living with his grandma. And he's like, I see my dad. And I'm going, what happened? And he's so like, he was living with, okay, we'll get, we'll get there. Okay. We'll get there. Yeah. We'll get there. Cause we haven't got to the part where, you know, you get your two kids taken yeah. away and for the reason. So you had yeah. your first kid at 25. At 25. And obviously you said you hit it. You didn't tell anybody once you had the baby, you know, you allowed them. They wanted to come see if it was, if it was his, yeah. if it was his, which obviously it was. Yeah. And, um, you were, were, were you working or, oh, hey, hold I on. I wasn't working. I got on welfare. Let me, before, let me ask. After how long that you had your baby, did you start to get high again? Um, when a year and three months, because I was still breastfeeding, you know? Okay, okay. Yeah. so you were strong enough at least. Yeah, hell yeah. I was like, I I'm going to do this shit for my baby, you know? Like, a baby's looking at me, and I'm like, what do I do with him? Because like, you were older already. You I were was, 25. Yeah, and... You know, he taught me how to love. He softened up my heart and he would look at me. He started crawling and he would always cry to me, mommy, mommy. And I'm like, Fuck, I finally have something that wants me, you know, mm. and loves me. And boom, I ended up kicking it again. And they brought out the shit. And I'm like, no, I'm cool. Come on, just rack one up. And now nah, I'm breastfeeding, you know, I don't want to. Come on, for one. And I'm like, just one. one. And that one time it's never started my addiction again. I yeah. started getting high again. And then what happened? Mm, I think like about when my son turned, he was seven, I lost my kids. But throughout the whole time, I was smoking meth. How many kids do you have? I had two at that time. So you I got two them. taken away? Two. And throughout those, your kid, your son was seven, through those five years, you were just on welfare or you were just working? I was working. And okay, so you're working, mm -hmm. obviously you're probably still getting welfare. Yeah. We're just... Which is fine. Like, boy, we need help. You know, no, what I'm right now I'm, I don't get welfare, but at the time, yeah. No. Oh, I mean, at the time. Yeah, yeah at the time. Yeah. I mean, even if you did right now, yeah. so fuck what? You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. What? Yeah, I was hustling the system. Like, the government it does not care for us. No. So, whatever. Mm -hmm. Right? So, you were working throughout those years, but you were still getting high. Yeah. So, what led you to get your kids taken away? 
So um, me and my baby daddy were getting high. Okay. So it's, and this is a second. You're my saying, second baby daddy. Okay. So we we were getting high, and I noticed a pattern where we will fight, argue, get into it. Then we will fight for the f- shit, the pookie, the <gasps> dope. Oh, you greedy ass bitch! No, fuck you! You hit it. You already smoked it on, and it just it became really, really ugly. You know? Oh God, yeah. So um, the reason why this is what. I was told because I was like, you can say unconscious. I was under the influence of alcohol. That was like another big thing. I was an alcoholic as well. Um, I remember I went out with my baby daddy to a bar. He's like, let's let's go out to a bar. My son had just got ran over the seven year old. <gasps> and how did that happen? Um, we were crossing the street and we were on Rosecrans. So the light turned red on us out of nowhere. And I guess the car that was just coming, I owned a trailer and the car next to the trailer didn't see us. And I remember telling Jonathan, oh, my God, it turned red. I'll take the baby. Run, mijo, run. I'll push the stroller. Fuck. And then when I told him to run, the truck fucking took him. Uh, a, a truck took him. And obviously you're under the influence. And, no, I wasn't high that day, but, you know, I wasn't yeah. high that day. So I was like, what the fuck? And I let the stroller go. I We chased the truck. Um, My son... All of this, he he had a third degree burn all in from his foot. He had a Chuck Taylor. The whole Chuck Taylor was gone because he dragged him. So that fucking oh. even hit me harder. I was getting high at, mother- at the hospital in Long Beach. They gave me a Ronald McDonald home. They're like, you have a newborn. We're, we're going to give you a home across the street from the hospital. Getting high, drunk. I would go in high as and my little boy would look at me like he knew. Yeah, he's like, I hate you. Like, why are you even here? Oh, I want to cry. It's okay to cry. But, um, it's okay to cry. Yeah. So he was there for like a month and a half. My mom took him. He was like, just he like, let me take your son out. I think they went to Santa Monica Pier. And that day, I went out with my baby daddy. We went to the bar. We started arguing, fighting the same pattern. Mm-hmm. He left. He's like, you know what, Susie? I'm not gonna hear your shit. I'm gone. He left, and I went. Back to his mom's house. Give me my baby. I don't give a fuck your son. And and this is what people were telling me. Like, bitch, you were drunk as fuck. And I remember leaving the house. And I hit the alley because he lived by an alley. And I was pushing the stroller. And I remember I fell. And my luckily my son was buckled in. But, you know, the stroller hit the side and he fell. Oh, no. And, and after that, when I... um. When I hit the main street on Imperial, I don't remember shit. You blacked out? I blanked. blanked out. All I remember is being at a bus stop. I got up and I'm like, oh shit. Where's the baby? He, no, I, he was with me. I like the stroller was next to me. And once I crossed the street back to the other side of Atlantic, um, I got stopped by a cop. So somebody called. reported me. Yeah, somebody called it in. And they were like, um, ma'am, um, stay there and you're under the influence. And I'm like, no, I'm not in. I, I remember that part. I was just, already awake. Just a mess. Just yeah. a mess. And I was like, they were like, we're going to call CPS on you. You're going to go to jail for under the influence. Do you know what time is it? It's three in the morning. Yeah, You're with a newborn. But I didn't know this. I'm here thinking it's still like 10, 11, which is still a bad time to be out there with your kid. Yeah, you know? for sure. And um, and I went to jail and I went to jail for that and for um, child endangerment. And um. My mom, they ended up calling my mom and she took my baby in. So she ended up staying with the kids. And when I went to court, um, they were trying to give me seven years in prison. And I was like, I'm not taking no f- seven years. I didn't do nothing bad. Right. I'm still in denial. I'm still in denial. Like, like, I didn't even abuse my kids. I don't even hit my kids. I love my kids. Even though we don't realize yeah. at the time how bad we are behaving, how bad we are treating our kids. Like us, we're so messed up in our heads. Like if you're drinking every freaking day, you're getting high every day. Like it doesn't even matter if you're smoking weed and drinking every day. Yeah. Like you are not showing a good behavior. And who are we to judge? Right. I'm yeah. we're a fucking smoker. As like now I just say that because oh, I have speaker as so yeah. what? I mean, it yeah. is what it is. We learned it's different. Like now we're able to talk about that. Like, exactly. you know, oh, don't forget where you come from. That's what we're, that's why we're having these conversations yeah. so that somebody that could see this, it's like, man, like, am I really Doing exactly. this? Like, yes, the f- you are because you're not putting your child first. Yeah. You're putting your own feelings first. Like, I want to get drunk and party. Like, yeah. Those are your feelings first. Exactly. You're not We're putting. Greedy as f- 
when we're in addiction. Yeah. You know, we're selfish and shit. But so you went to you went you went to Linwood. I went to Linwood, and it was your first time. It, it, like, you know, I've been I've been to jail before, but not like like that them time. trying to offer me seven yeah. years. In so you prison. Just, did you get bailed out? Um, no, okay. I was still there. So I, they were trying to like, they were like, okay, four years, three years. I said, I'm not doing that. And they were like, give me the lowest. I'll do a program. I'll do anything. I want my kids. I really love my kids. And he's like, okay, let me see what I could do for you. So I had to get a restraining order against my own kids for five years. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. He's like, but you'll be out in, in, in a month. And then I'm like, I'm like, okay, cool. They're, he's like, you'll be able to seize. Is it, no, modify. You'll be able to modify your um, restraining order after two years. And I'm like, but still two years not seeing my kids, a restraining order. So I took the deal and I was like, fuck it. I know I'm a badass bitch. I'm going to do this. I'm going to figure this shit out. And I was on probation. I had a report when, with my probation officer. And um, I started doing the program. I was doing good. Um, I left my baby daddy. I was like, you're still in your same bullshit. Because you woke, you woke up. Yeah. You know, I got out of jail and I seen him in the alley. I was like, babe, they took our kids away. Like, he's like, yeah, it's your fault, you f***ing bitch. And then I was like, oh, this fool's already somebody else. I felt that, you know? I, and like, they, hey, but, do you, high. but do you see the thought, though? Yeah. Like, instead of like, instead of just like, oh, this was just on drugs. Like, yeah. your thought was like, oh, this fool's already Somebody else. It instantly, the Which way was he, like the like. Does that even matter? Like the fact that the fact that he was like the fact that you were just like oh he's already up and not even he's already somebody else and not even worried about him not caring for the kids. Yeah, that came too. You know. Yeah. But for him to act that way, I already knew he was with somebody else. You know, because mm -hmm. he usually does care. And I was like, oh, he just don't care. And he shined me off. He's like, why don't you go tell the you were kicking it with? And I said, okay, it's cool. I said, just give me my bank card, give me my, my keys, and don't trip, I'll leave you alone. And I left him alone. And after two weeks, he was looking for me everywhere. Everywhere. He went to my mom. My mom called me. Oh, he's looking for you. Let me ask you, were you in these two years before, were you, did you, were, did you, were you able to see your, your yeah, kids? I, okay. After probably three months. Okay. Which is okay. Yeah. You know, like. Obviously, you, got, you were able to get yourself together in those mm -hmm. three months. You were able to look at the bigger picture in those three months. Yeah. You were able to appreciate, like, oh, okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I knew I had fucked up. And um, so what happened? Um, I did a program, I'm telling you. And then after, like, the fourth month, I started relapsing. And I will, and my counselor would be like, I know you're high. I'm like, no, I'm not. She's like, well, you're only lying to yourself. Like, she was tough. Like, she didn't give a fuck. She Real shared, shit. but she was an addict herself. She was a heroin addict. And she was like, all right, um, today letter um, S, M, L has to go test. And I'm like, I'm on one. Like, and I'm like, oh, I dropped my P. She's like, okay, it's fine. You know, we'll mark it as a dirty test. But I'm like, it's going to be dirty, but there's no urine. There's no proof that I was actually dirty, you know? Mm -hmm. and, she, and then I walk out. She's like, you're only lying to yourself. Keep on playing yourself. I'm like, oh, I want to this Talk you shit, you know, get yeah, mad. Yeah, put you on your Because like, the truth, truth hurts. That's right, that's right. And um, and then I left the program because I got with my baby daddy okay. again, and we started getting high. I didn't give a f um. What made you want to keep going back to your baby daddy, considering you guys knew that you guys didn't get along for shit? Mm -hmm. Because we were both two sorry mother. And we will go back to each other, and we'll tell each other we loved each other, and not only that, but. We were sober for a while, for like a year, and and I met him, you know, sober, and I got with him when he was sober, so I, I know the real him, not only the high him, you know, mm -hmm. and and I know he's a good man, and but the drugs destroyed us, and that's what kept on me going back, and we women are providers, and we always want to make it right in the family, like, I got you, baby, I'm your backbone, I'm, I'm, I'm a solid bit to you, it's always and oh, I'm your Bonnie and Clyde, but f that. I never said that. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Okay, I gotta, <laughs> you know, like. You guys didn't have, like, domestic violence issues. Hell yeah. That's fine. Yeah. He, he started hitting me. I allowed it. And then, like, we started boobopping each other. Do you think it was more of the addiction that kept you guys yeah. going back? No, because I would get my own shit. But, you know, like, I really loved him, and he loved me, and. We were good for a while, you know, but we just didn't want to leave our addiction. We loved our addiction more than us. 
yeah. you know, than our kids and anything. But um, how long did that go for? Because obviously you were on probation. You you were you able like did your mom I, let you see the kids after you relapsed? She made it hard for me, which was amazing. She made it hard for me. I mean, I would have done the same thing. Like, yeah. oh, you're not seeing your kids. Yeah. You know, she made it hard for me, but it made me weaker because every time she'll shine me off yeah. or she'll be like, I'm going to cancel the visit. I'll go get high because that's that's how I'll kill, you know, the, my pain. Uh -huh. Like, fuck it, I'm just going to go smoke them. Um, and and I got to uh, the kids were gone for like 17 months. That was a long time. And, and you know, what I mean, my newborn, he was like two months old. I didn't even breastfeed him. I didn't. Those are the most important, the important year, the bonding with your baby, you know? Mm -hmm. I got him back when he was already walking and shit. Um, so, yeah, that that hurt me a lot, and I, le I learned from it, but I still decided to f when I got the kids back. So so after the 17 months, you did what you had to do to yeah. get your kids back, yeah. which was probably, like, do the parenting, mm -hmm. uh, go to the court. Do therapy. Do therapy through the urine test. You yeah. obviously got clean for some time. I did. You know, because um, you have to, you know, you I have to, yeah. you have to. And they see it that you got to be presentable. You know, I didn't have ojeras. I, my cheeks were not sucked mm -hmm. in. I look good, you know. Yeah. But then when I got my kids back, I I rented a room with a homegirl and I started seeing the movement again. Yeah. And she's like, you want to sell some shit? Hell yeah. Bitch, I want to make money. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's and do it. Start pool, you want to hit it? Nah, I'm cool, fool. But after two weeks, I gave in. <sighs> and I started getting high. Again, it was a big pattern. It was hard to let go of that shit, you know? I know. Because the feeling is bomb. I was able to clean. I was able to be a mom. I was able to cook. <laughs> it's funny that you say that because I, I feel like when you first start getting high, you're able to do all of that. Mm -hmm. But once the addiction gets grabs, gets a hold of you, you think you're cleaning, but you're really making a bigger mess. Really? I never was that type oh, of okay. tweaker. I was a clean one, like always cleaning and trying to make everything perfect. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, um... Then I then I started working again as a programming, a CNA at an adult daycare. I ended up getting fired. Why okay? did you get fired? Because my addiction. I, I didn't realize that till afterwards. I'm like, I'm an amazing worker. Um, you know, I'm always on time. But bullshit. After that, hitting the pookie so much, it's like, oh, shit, I'm late. I was always late to work. They had me doing shit like doing um, paperwork and they'll catch me sleeping. You know, I'm in the restroom hitting the pookie you, at work did you ever get caught hitting the pookie? no oh, never okay. but they noticed a pattern like you know i, I don't know they know yeah, they're, they're like they're nurses you know and you, and then you started working a certain way and you they saw you changing yeah they saw the changes in and you. then i got laid off then my baby daddy got busted he knew the number from the workplace um, Ms. Sandoval, can you please come to the office um we were getting call. collect calls from prison <gasps> oh my goodness from county Oh, bitch, I was mad as <laughs> mad as I had to go visit him. Like, why the f are you calling my job? Yeah, you didn't... Well, baby, I want you. I'm mean, not nah, that shit. Don't be doing that shit. All of a sudden, you want me. Yeah, all of a sudden, you know? And then I got fired. And yeah, we're going to have to let you go. Like, your work ethic is not the same. And we're going to have to let you which go. Which is totally understandable. I you walked know? out mad as Well, f you then, b Oh, no, I believe it. I believe it. I believe walked it. Out, I want to go get high. Yeah. And and then what happened? And um, I continued my addiction life and I was just bouncing around. Then I was just with bouncing around with my kids from shelter to shelter, from so, room. Wait, so you've gone to a shelter with your children. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, I, I don't know that experience. I, you know, I, uh, I. I want to know more about it. Like, what's the process that you need to take in case there's somebody that is watching that is in that situation. Like, what is the steps you need to take to get into the shelter? And not even just that. Well, and then after you answer that, I'll ask you, how do you felt? How do you think your kids felt? Yeah. So um, somebody gave me the info of 211. So 211, guys, is a big resource, like food, toys, um, clothing, everything that you could think of, 211. And and it gave me a resource. Called you dial 211? You dial 211, and it directs you to an operator. Hi, 211. What type of services do you need? Got it. I'm homeless. Okay, and they pull out a list. They text you now or they email you a whole list of shelters. So there was my first time being in a shelter. I was pregnant by my son, by my my 19 year old. And I was at um, it was a church and it was very hard because your curfew is at 1 p.m. And you're at church and you're now you have to be with the nuns all day. I hated it. 
I fucking hated it. And I'm like, I'm not used to telling me, people telling me what to do. And I got to do chores and I got to cook for other, everybody had a day to cook for one another. And and it's like being in jail. I've never been in jail for a long time, but I've, I've experienced jail and it felt like jail dealing with bitches. And I got down while I was pregnant, got kicked out, <gasps> went to another shelter and is that my whole life just been like that from shelter to shelter with your children with my children all of them and um of course there's there were shelters that they didn't want my teenager they only took little ones so then that's when I was like I'm not separating with my kids because it probably made them feel like uncomfortable lonely you're already hurting because I'm hurting you you know, so Hi. we went to Skid Row and I went to go live over there just because I know that people were donating, donating food. I still so you actually lived on Skid Row. Like mm-hmm. you have like a tent. No, I lived in my van. Wow. Yeah, I lived in my van with all three of my kids and I was only in the shelter there for two days. And I just didn't want to be in there in a whole gym with a lot of people. And um, I decided to live in my car. And I lived there for like a year for with all three kids. For a year? Yeah. Did your kids go to school? Yeah. They went to school. Um, I was on welfare. I had a part-time job. Um, I was still doing it. I was like, I'm not going to give up on and my... And you were getting high? And getting high. Oh, God. Yeah. Gosh, and Anna. Yeah. It was, it was really hard. It was hard because... Um, like, I would go to the alleys. I was just on live two days ago, and I'm like, guys, like, fuck. That's why I'm really, like, going to Linwood, because I'm like, everything's a trigger. Like, everything's a memory. And I would hit alleys and get cardboards to cover, like, my car, like, the windows because of the cold. Um, every day. And how old were your kids? My daughter was, she was a newborn. She was a newborn. And um, the other one was a year old. Jonathan was, like, eight uh, we'll shower in parks at Linwood Park, and my oldest will. I wish I, will, I bought a bucket, okay, from Home Depot. Like I got a bucket, and I will fill it up with water. And I had a cup, and I will go to the handicap um, restroom, and I will shower him. And he was like, and he will just put his head down. I go, it's okay, baby. He's like, I hate you. I don't want to be with you, but I, I remember I've always told my son. Please give me a chance. I fucked up. I'm the only one here. I don't got the support from my mom. I don't got nobody. It's only me against the whole world. Look at me and I will always grab him. I promise you, I'm going to get ripe. I promise you, it's not easy. And um, we lived like that for a lot of years. And um, I would eat at food banks, hot meals. We lived off of that. We... He hated me. My son hated me for a lot of years. We sit with people that smelled. We had a, but I was so humble that I didn't care. Like I was like, Fuck, I'm trying to feed my kids, you know? And, um. But you had no choice. I had no f-ing choice. My food stamps would run out. I mean, I mean, I Jack in the Box, Subway. And, um, I think where it also hurt me more, I would park in front of my mom's house. And I'm like, one day she's going to come out. She never did. Yeah, that like, was well, she would. She would come out. One day she's gonna say, you know what? F- let the kids come in. And I would have gave up on my kids on my own to my mom, you know? But no, she'll go outside, she'll water her grass. And I'm like, she's not gonna ask us cold ass f- out of here. And she's over there watering the grass. She and, wanted to see if you were there, probably, huh? Or you know, like knowing her pattern, I feel like she wanted to see me hurt. To be real, I'm going to keep it 100. I know she loved me, but she always wanted to see that other side of me, like to see if she affected me. And and I would just like lay there and I, in the back window and I would be like, all right, cool. Get my little card, but I don't even want to look at you. And I would just cry like, oh, my God, how am I going to get out of this? And I was like that for a long time. People, I didn't think people knew. Everybody on Atlantic, hey, have your kids, hey, businesses. Have your kids say, um, no, come, come feed your kids. Everybody was feeding us on Atlantic, you know? And um, Everybody knew. Everybody knew my struggle. Everybody seen us fighting. And how did you take the kids to school? Like, what did you? On my van. I would drive them to school. No, no, not that. Like, I'm saying, like, the address. Like, did you have, did they know that you were homeless? Like, yeah, you could say you're homeless. They don't require for an address. You just say you're homeless. And you would go wash the clothes at the laundromat, things like that. Okay. Oh, my goodness. And I was always sleeping at McDonald's for Wi-Fi or because there was a lot of cameras. I slept in laundry mats. Did you ever experience anybody trying to hurt you and your kids? Um, no. 
Oh, thank God. They were all helpful. Oh, my goodness. Like, all the homeless people that would come with to get their food stamps. You need anything for the kids? You know? And then I started building hate for my baby daddy. Dan, this can't even come and offer me a plate of food. Or like, know? hey, I'll take the kids. Like, yeah. so they're not in the car. Yeah. Like, I'm like, he's over there sleeping with his mom. And I'm over here in the van. You know? Yeah. Then uh, my car stopped running. I was at the shop. And um, I, I never forget this. It, it was at Winchell's. He's like, wait right here, babe. Wait right here. I got you. I'm going to go get money so I could get a room. 9, 10, 11, 12. And, I was, and at that time, I had a wagon. And he never showed up. I, I fucking passed out with my kids. You know, I had put, I remember I put the wagon between my legs and I'm like, okay, f- it's already one in the morning. He ain't here. He'll come. And no girl, I ended up passing out. I woke up and the lady at the donut shop was like, you're okay? And I was like, like I literally slept there. like With the kids outside. And, and wind chills, dude, you know? Wow. Like that was her fun. It was only two experiences where I slept with the kids in the street. That's so crazy. Like it's, you know, the things that we do to uh, the choices that we make, even though at the when we're younger, we're not thinking about that, how that getting high is going to f- affect me yeah. at 25 to having me sleep in the mm-hmm. outside with our kids. Yeah. And like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, that was hard. So this is how my life started transitioning to the good. My baby daddy got busted in 2015. They seized my car. Because, you know, they were doing their investigation. They rolled up on me. I was actually sleeping in the street with my kids. Somebody must have told where I was at because I was always moving in different sections. But I heard that it was a neighbor that snitched on me. Oh, she's sleeping there. So anyways, I remember I got up and um, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go to the gym. Because even the guy gave me a free membership at a gym on Atlantic. So you can- I'm going to the gym. And as soon as I jumped in the front seat, I seen a detective car drive by. And I'm like, shit, that's social workers. So I went down. He went. He made a right turn, but he actually bust a bitch, came back. I turned on my car, and they rolled up on me. Get the fuck off the car. With the kids in it. With the kids. I go, don't. I have kids in the car. I, I, I was across the street from my mom. I was like, just let me take the kids to my mom. Got, they tried to book me in for a murder. I was scared. I was Did like, your mom take the kids? She took the kids. Oh, my goodness. And my mom, this I know she loves me because she was like, on my side and she looked at me like what that look like I'm my baby you know and um so anyways I ended up getting out no car now I'm in a in shopping cart from El Super <sighs> so I started seeing stroller wagon walking shopping cart you ain't shit you ain't got nothing now I'm pushing um all through Atlantic I was always on Atlantic asking people do you got 20 bucks let's get a hotel like that you know, and um, so I called two one one again. I called two one one, and they gave me. And your me mom a- has her kids this whole time. No, they're back with you. They're back. I want to go pick them up in the fucking cart. In in a shopping cart, like oh I, I was because I didn't have a car. So I was always finding somewhere to live there. I always hustled, you know, to get a room. And um, um. What made you wait? Wait. What What made you want to get your kids back though and have them in the cart? Like, what was your thought process? I I wanted my kids. They were the only ones that kept me going. Okay. Yeah. I think if I didn't have my kids, I wanted to die. You know? I was suicidal. So um, I wanted them back. Even though if I had to sleep in living room, couches, hotels, I did it. I still made it happen. I always made it happen. That's right. And um, so... On 4th of July, I met this girl and she was like, hey, do you know anybody that's homeless? Like randomly. I didn't know her. My church is the best church promoting her church. Um, She's like, you should come. Just come hear the word of God. And that is when I met Pastor Todd and Watts, his church. And um, he noticed one day I got on my knees and I never got on my knees at church. You know, I was always sitting there like, what okay, I can't here? wait to and lunch times I could with my kids. You know, that's I was just worried about feeding, the them. feeding them and the garage to get closed. And he noticed that I was crying and like, <laughs> like, cause they said some, the word of God that hit me, like that was meant for me. And I was leaving. He's like, come back, Susan. Talk to me. What's going on? 
please tell me. And I told him, he's like, what? I could help you. And they paid for my hotel. We're going to pay for your hotel. We're going to figure this out. We're going to pay for your hotel till you find somewhere to live. And he's like, but you got to promise me you got to call to one one every morning. And after two weeks, I got in and I went to the valley. But you were getting high? Or you stopped getting I high? I stopped getting high right there. Right then and then when you got on your knees? Uh, like that same day? No, or, not that same day. But, but I, 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 and when that, could, that, in that matter of like whatever weeks. I, I was sober for like the whole time I was in the hotel because I didn't want the pastor to see me high. Oh but I did God, it. It was God working. Yeah, it was God working. But. I mean, he always works. Does he always, he always yeah, works? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when I got into the main shelter, I went to Glendale. I started getting high again. <sighs> but I knew that that's it. I'm done. I don't want to. I'm going to pick my kid. You're at this time already. Like 34, 35. Oh, shit. Yeah. 34, 35, around there. And um, Jonathan's traumatized with liquor stores. That's my oldest. And he's like, no, mom, please don't go there. Please, mom, please. And he would do this. Please, no. Because he would get drunk yeah. and you would behave fucking And then drunk. I'll get high. You know? And he's like, let's not leave from Glenda. I go, I don't want to be here. Everybody's so nice everybody's like hi and i'm not used to this shit i want to go back to the hood Pobrecito. yeah but then i decided to stay and i asked for help and the therapist was like well i don't do therapy for addiction i only do for domestic violence but i'll do this for you Susanna." and she went and bought books and every wednesday we had classes and i got my housing through there i was permanent at a job and now I'm in the valley and my life has changed and I don't want to come back to the hood. I love you, Linwood, and I don't think I'm better than nobody, but life changes and it's for the best, man. Like it's for you the best. You changed. The life I, stays the same. True. You've changed. You've grown. You've realized I can't do this anymore. You've had you had your kids in the street. Street. Yeah. And now they're they they come up to me. And they hug me. And you know what, mom? I know I say a lot of hurtful shit, but... Because I'm sure it still is like... Yeah. He's like, oh, but when you be smoking meth, I'll be like this. Still throwing punches at me, but I got to take it. It is what it is. Yeah. But no, now he, they're appreciative. Thank you for not giving up on me. Because they always be like, thank you, mom. For what? For not giving up on us. And, I, you know, it's not my home. I'm going to get one soon, hopefully. And it's my own apartment, but... It's, I have your, a, it's your apartment. Yeah, I have everything that they need. Everything. Like, we got beds. I even have a bed. No, I see you. I see your bed. You have a nice bed. You have a nice... Bitch. nice. Bed. Okay, so so since then, that was said when you were like 35, you are yeah. saying, when you got went to Glendale and they helped you mm-hmm. and they helped you get your apartment. And where, you, and where Valley? In the Valley, it's San Fernando Valley. San, San Fernando Valley. And you're still in the same place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, what have you been doing? Like, what is what what helps Linwood stay sober and keep going? Um, I don't want to lose my kids again, cause I lost them twice, you know. And it had, the second time they didn't have to do with addiction, but it, it it was still the lifestyle I was living. Yeah. Sometimes not even addiction is a lifestyle. Yeah. 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 And I just don't want to do that to them. I want to show them better. I want to show them that regardless if we fuck up, we can still make it right. I'm gonna make better for you and i know i get judged a lot on social media oh you're on welfare so what if i was on welfare you ain't helping me feed my kids that's right i want to stay at at home i want to be a stay at home mommy i want to be a mother to my kids now i cook for them you've always been a mother you just had the addiction Mm -hmm. but you've always had your children you never you never not let go of them and even if you had them in the cart you still had your children and you didn't fucking give them away i didn't I and can never yet, do that. And yeah, they went through the struggle with you, but maybe this is what's going to help them in their future, be mm-hmm. strong kids, strong men, and strong woman yeah. to be a real good man, yeah. not a f- man that's just throws away like their lives or just mm-hmm. whatever. I'm not talking shit. I'm just saying yeah, like, like, you know, make them be a f- just make strong. Make them strong, fool. Like you know? he's strong. Like when my kids got taken away, he, uh, at that time I was at another program in downtown LA. I told the cops, oh, they're going to get picked up. I left on my card. Every day you're going to take these kids to school. And I was calling from jail. I, Wake up, Jonathan. And he'll pick up the phone. I'm oh, going to both. school all the way to Glendale, from downtown to Glendale. By himself. Bet them and not until they got picked up again, you know. But he's wow. strong. He, he was by he, himself in the street. By himself. Taking At that time he was 15, 14 or 15. Pobrecito. On the bus with two little ones. One in pre-K, the other one in kinder. 
Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now he tells me, like, I don't know how I did it, mom, but hey, now, now he goes on his own on the bus. Like, he knows how to deal with shit in life now on his own. And I know it's because of the struggle, you know? He yeah. he don't depend on me. Yeah, I might take care of him right now. That's your baby. Financially. But it's other okay. than that, he goes hey, to the doctor. Hey, it's the least doc- you could do, bitch, having the yeah. street, you know what yeah. I'm saying? True. So, but now he goes to the do- eye doctor on his own, the ortho on his own. Like, he's a shit on his own. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You know, that's that's good. You know, I'm proud of you. I'm proud Thank of you. you. I'm I'm proud of the woman you are now. You know, obviously people judge, but it's a lot of menos. Yeah. It's a lot of menos. You are okay. You are okay. You're sober. I mean, yeah. you know, you're clean because obviously we still drink. Well, I'm and clean shit. off of meth. Yeah. yeah. I'm working on my alcohol. Like. I have a question for you. Yeah. Because growing up, I didn't have it like the best with my mom. Um, what was it like for your son now? Well, what's it like for your son now? Like, does he like hold it against you? Does he? Throw it in your face or anything like that. Or oh yeah, for a lot of years. Oh, I can't stand you, tweaker. Oh, look at you. But now he just throws like little like little piedradas. Like oh, but when you were in your addiction, it was okay, huh, mom? And I'm like, you know what, Jonathan, you're right, son. I apologize for coming at you like that. My bad. You're right. Your feelings are valid. That's right. But I still tell him like I'm still the mom. And- I- I'm still your mom. I made mistakes, but. You got to work on yourself. Go get help. You got to cuss me out in therapy. Bitch, she made me go through this. Do it. Because you can't live your life throwing it in that person's face. Like, even if I see my mom right now, I don't think I'll throw anything on her face. I healed. I I did it all out on therapy. So I'm I'm telling my son that mental health is real. It's going to f*** with you. It's going to haunt you. You're going to think of the bad times and not the good times. Go get help. And that's what I tell my son. Get therapy. I remind them all the time. All yeah, the time. I love, you know, that's that's good. That's good. I was, um, I know this is about you right now, but as my husband was like asking a question, like it kind of felt like it kind of like it hit him, like it hit him and he yeah. kind of wanted to cry a little bit, you yeah. know, because he also, his mom was an alcoholic, mm-hmm. you know? And so I was like, oh man, you guys are killing me right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, don't ever be sorry. Like I was f***ed up too, you know? Yeah. So, so now what do you do? Like, you know, like you're this TikToker, you know, you're like fucking doing your thing. Like, dude, you know what I mean? I don't want to consider myself famous. It was just an accident how I just started like popping. Cause I've always fucked. I never bite my tongue. Just the prison wives are coming for me. <laughs> what the fuck about the prison wives? <laughs> Cause I was out there on social media, just telling my story and preaching how, how some women actually go look for a prison man. And I would tell girls, I remember I told this girl, girl, stop crying. She made a video with all kind of letters and saying on her video. And she was like this, I'm depressed without him. I don't think I can move forward in life without oh him. Oh my goodness. So I made a comment on that and they all f- who at least my kids have their mom we're in the same boat sis they might have their mom my kids might not have me but your kids don't have their dad same shit just two different completely sex you know yeah but and they came for me and I was still just preaching out there and then I started popping people a lot of girls that had lost their kids to the system started approaching me because it's relatable yeah we've all gone through you know if, and, if you're our lifestyle you could relate and if you can't and nobody talks about it, sis. Yeah, that's right. Nobody wants to talk about it because we're scared of humiliation. We're scared of people pointing fingers. We're scared of um, people calling DCFS on us, you know, while we're trying to fix ourselves. You know, it, it gets kind of embarrassing, like, oh, shit, like, we don't fit in in the real world. But fuck that is reality. It's Th- real that is the shit. real world. From the poor, from minority to the rich. That's right. Y'all go through it. And that's why I don't bite my tongue and I Tell it like it is and people don't like it and you guys are going to still not like me. You guys got two choices. Love me or hate me. Take my advice for the good or f- keep on f***ing up, you know? That's right. That's and, right. Um, and I don't know. And I'm just popping and I'm making my money. And Gracias. That's why I'm sticking to social media till I find that job. I'm, I'm still going to school to be a caseworker now. Oh, good. I changed my career from nursing to a caseworker. And, so um, you're in school. Yeah. Okay. Right now I'm only taking one class. Hey, whatever. I got, can... I got two certificates where I can go work um, with the youth and the shelter. You could do both. You could use that for your social media as well. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing now. You know, little baby steps, but I'm getting there. Hey, I see the progress. It's never like 
It's, it's, never, never, it's never late. I don't care if I'm 80 years old, the, the f- older, the wiser. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid dick. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> but my passion is the youth. I speak to a lot of the youth. I go and pick up my son at school. All the kids, Lynn, what oh my God. Because I'll say messages. And for everybody at this school, get it right. You're in a continuation school, but you're going to get out of it. That's right. You, could, you know, I'm always sending little positive mm-hmm. messages. It's not always me talking shit. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah. But yeah, and now I'm doing better. Good. Well, yeah. I mean, we, we never stop working on ourselves. Never. Never. It's like mm-hmm. every day we still have to work on ourselves. Every day is something. But the most important part is that you're not on meth. No. You have your kids at your house. Ha- they're they they've had they've been stable. I yeah. guess is what I'm saying. You're stable. We're your stable. kids been stable for a few years. Yeah. We've been we've been there since 2020. Yeah. Well, four years. Almost four years. You know. Yeah. Stable. And it's never too late. It's never too late, and I'm still thriving for more. Now I'm just working on getting a house. You know. And you will. Yeah. Dios. Yeah. I, I'm gonna get it. That's right. Even though if it has to be, it's a program slash housing authority where I'm at. So I'm going to get into the Section 8 and get into a program. I forgot what the program is called, but they help you buy a home. Well, shit, I need to get into the damn program. <laughs> Girl, I'm taking advantage you, of you everything. Know what? You have to. There's yeah. some people that actually, like, there's people that need it. Like, yeah. need it, and they still refuse to make those calls to get in the program. Like, why not? Yeah. If they have those, why not go through the program exactly. and buy your house? Buy your, even if you're a full-time worker, if you have a job, like, you should, right? Yeah. Like, if you have all of this, like... Why not? Why not? Nobody else is going to do it for you. So don't be embarrassed if like, you're on Section not? 8 EBT. Why not? Nobody's going to help you. So take advantage of other resources. No, I'm not on this. Like, yeah. hey, you're good for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. You know, and they just say it because they, they don't have the privilege to have it. Yeah. You know, they get EBT or they get Medi-Cal or they get WIC. Stop bullshitting. <laughs> And even you know? whatever, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, there's. It's, but you, but use it, use, use it. Use I swear. Package. I was so pissed I couldn't get wicked anymore because my son turned five. <laughs> Shit's expensive. Mom was so pissed. He literally just turned mm-hmm. five. I was like, damn. And also, I wanted to mention for all the ladies and men out there, there's two one one. If you're trying to like change, get a rehab, free classes. If you're trying to get your kids back, um, two one one. It's where you could get a lot of low income free stuff. They help you with everything. There's help out there. There's help. Now that I'm right in the in the mind, I'm not tweaked I mean, out. I mean, really not right in the mind. We're all <laughs> <this image. laughs> But now that I'm not on meth and yeah. I'm focused now. Of course. It's like, like, there's really help. I just didn't want it. That's right. That's I just right. didn't want it. And, you know, now I'm always giving out resources everywhere. That's right. You know, that's, your, you know, that's, that's God working that's with you. God He's working, using yeah. you to help others. And that's who yeah. we're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. I feel like. That's what I do as well in one form or another. I've always been like that. You know, I don't know the resources. So you give me the resources as well, you know, yeah. to put it out there as well. You have a major platform like you are living with G thing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you just started. The, did you just like did you start on TikTok? I started on Facebook. And then my daughter was like, "Your Facebook's for old people." No, you're like, and you she think downloaded I'm... a TikTok for okay. me. Okay. And that's how it started. Um, she made video for videos for me. Mom, I made videos for you, and the videos were touching. Like, Mom, I wish our visits wouldn't end. I miss you, Mom. Oh wow. And I'm like, she oh. had a tablet at foster home, and she would leave me messages, and it took me a while to reply to a message. I'm like, I'm gonna get hate for this shit, and I can't do shit about it. I can't boop all these bitches and. Boom, I decided to make a video. You remember that song? Yo te necesito. Uh-huh. Okay, that was my first TikTok video with their pictures. And I was laying down sad. And I'm like, me depressed, wishing my kids were here. And boom, that's the first thing I got hate. But I didn't give a f- That's right. And I just started making videos and videos. Of- it helped you probably. Maybe that was kind of therapeutic for me, mm-hmm. for you too. And I shared my whole journey. From court dates, from visits, from my daughter crying, from my daughter saying, I don't want to be here. Was it, I'm sure it was hard for them. Did you? Did they ever tell you of anybody really mistreating them? Yeah. Um, the last foster home where they were at, they, um, if they didn't want to eat certain foods, she didn't care if they didn't want it. I don't want to eat that. Then you're, all you're having is a granola bar till 12 p.m. And oh, I, wow. called, I called her out on that shit. And she got mad and she reported me. And, you know, you can say like a little violation by the social workers. You can't be doing that because then that's going to add more time, time for your kids to be away. Mm-hmm. And I remember I told um, 
their fa foster dad. Um, I said, my kids have never been around another man ever since my baby daddy's been gone. I'm going to tell you something, bro. Like, you touch my daughter, you touch my son sexually or physically, it's on and popping, dog. I got your license plate. I might not know where you live, bitch, but I fucking took a picture of your license plate. That's and right. he never reported me. He just looked at me. He, he just looked at me. Because and I, maybe he saw that. Oh, you mean I'm not, I don't play about my kids. Bitch. No, for sure. Mm -hmm. No, he didn't. My kids have never, ever expressed that. God. You know, they but said. Did they say that they, that they liked them? Um, they said that he was cool, but they were always fighting. They were always drinking. They just had it. They, just, they were just they in were it the for the same, money. Just like me. Like you remove my kids out of my care and they're going through DV. And, yeah. and, and you know what the shit is that DCFS is so corrupted. They never documented none of that. My attorney will be like, well, there's nothing written down here. Wow. It was crazy. And they made them drink at nighttime. They couldn't have no nightlight. And my son's ADHD. Autistic kids, ADHD kids can't be in the dark like that. So, you know, like, bitch, like, even though if I was in addiction, I still took care of my kids and their medical needs and everything. Yeah. You know, and I got, I, I was really pissed. Like, I wanted to fuck that bitch up no, so I'm bad. Sure. She stopped going to the visits. It was just her husband taking the kids, you know, but. Because you were still showing up and everything. Yeah, I was always showing up and, you know, um, they had to drink water from the restroom. Oh, we have to, from a certain time, we have to go get water from the sink in the restroom. What? You're oh. like, I didn't have you been doing that. I mean, it was obviously, a there was little time that, yeah, but, yeah. you know. Yeah, it, it hurt me, you know, but it was so, it was so a lesson to be learned from me because the That's second right. time I was like, bitch, ignore me. I got my kids taken away for boot popping somebody and... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I went to jail and I and now I don't fight. It just like I ignored that old bitch that put my hair at, at the show, <laughs> at your show. You know how bad I wanted it. I don't care, bitch, if they were old teenagers, uh, my age. You want to hit? I'm gonna hit you back. Yeah. But I did. I said, you know what? Calm down, bitch. Like, you 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 have to learn yeah. to choose your battles. You, and it's hard. It's hard. I felt like a whole punk. An hour had passed, and I told you that bitch put my hair. You're like, ah, hey, you'll be fine. And I'm like. Yeah, I'll be fine. I was a whole ass bitch yeah, anyway. You like know? It, sometimes like things, and I'm sure you get so much hate. I do. I understand. I, I mean, I, you know, I understand, but you probably get way more hate. I do. You they know? even physically, uh, well, they somebody seen my truck in, at Walmart, and when I came out, somebody had wrote, Wait, I saw that. That was just like. <laughs> they scratched your car? That they was with only, a marker. That was only like two weeks ago. Yeah. Like literally two weeks ago. How does oh. that, I know you're laughing about it now, but like, how does that actually make you feel? It makes me pissed. I was, I was on the live. Where you at? Where you at? I'm right here. I'm by myself. No, she was. Where you at? Come out. Whoever the f you are, run. Let's run it. Why you got to come in right on my car? And cunt? literally all you do is just go live, talk your poop, to uh, responding to your followers yeah. and take care of your kids. That's it. It's not like you're out there picking on people. And just battling, doing funny shit just to make people laugh. Because I know I get a lot of people that are depressed out there. So that's all I do. Because the way I talk. Hey, the bitch is stupid, pendeja. But it's just funny, you know? Yeah. Like, and, I, and somebody really did that. I've had workers at my house saying that I do drugs. And you don't. Um, they've called. They, I don't know how they... Found out my address, my phone number. I get prank calls. I haven't changed my number. Probably know they're probably calling hey, me. you don't even know phone. your phone number. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I was like, <laughs> I don't know my number. She took a screenshot, sent me her phone number. She's like, I don't know my phone but number. But I get a lot of hate and I learned how to deal with it. And and you know what that is? It's people that want to see you down there. I just, and it's okay because it just shows what kind of people they are. They are, you know? I, I, I uh -huh. me, bitch, that shit, that shit ain't stopping my grind. For that sure. That ain't stopping my payments every week from TikTok, every Wednesday. Hello. Oh, it's Wednesday today, bitch. Yeah. Why well, am I treat you for lunch? Let's go. <laughs> yeah. I just got the ching ching. <laughs> but, you know, you learn how to deal with it. And it is what it Gracias is. Gracias a Dios. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Thank you. I'm Honestly, proud of you too. Yes. Be proud yeah. of yourself, you know, because no one really says to themselves, I'm proud of myself. Yeah. And if you don't say you're proud of yourself, why the f*** did anybody else yeah. say you're proud of you? Yeah. If I don't love me, I'll take care of me. I'm That's not right. even going to give a f*** about my kids. So you you're know? doing amazing. Yeah. You're doing amazing. That, I mean, what else, is, what else does it really say? Yeah. You know, um, before we close... Because you basically told us, you know, you already told us your story. You told yeah. us, you know, all about you. Um, is there anything else that you would want to share that you haven't shared with the Color Brown podcast? Um, 
just don't depend for everybody that's hurting and going through stuff. Don't depend on other people to make a change for you or to help you out because nobody's going to do it for you. That's Nobody right. gives a f about you. All your so-called friends, homies, all that. You got it in you. You could do it. Look in the fucking mirror and just say, I'm a badass bitch. That's what helped me. Don't depend on nobody. You got this on your own. That's right. And that's it. That's yeah. right. And thank you for having me and giving me an opportunity, both of you guys. I'm glad I got to meet you guys in person. You guys are amazing. Really. No, thank you for coming. Yeah, no, for sure. amazing me with I have a question. When oh. I first met you, you told me you thought I didn't like you. Why did I you did. think that? Why? Because I think your demeanor, I don't know you. I just know you as on social media. But then I started watching you more. And I was like, oh, that's just his character. That's just his persona. That's just how he is. You know? Yeah. I guess I'm so used to people like. Like disliking me that I feel like I fucking feel like, oh, he probably is one of the ones that don't like me. Yeah. But on, on some defensive shit. Yeah. Always. Defensive shit. Even when good things come your way, you always defensive on that shit, too, because mm -hmm. you're so used to the hate mm -hmm. and the bad shit coming yeah. to you. But now you're dope as fool. I'll be watching <laughs> you in the morning. I even be commenting, fool, go more often in the morning. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. We're very happy that you came. I was very, very, uh, I'm very appreciative that you came and your story is crazy and it makes me want to cry still to this moment. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Are you the type, man? This, 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 and you know, this car, this, he's, he's a hard guy, you know, yeah. not a hard, like I'm hard, but you know, we all have our, we block ourselves from our traumas as well, you know, and he probably touched them. He probably well, did the same shit sure. as my son, you know? For sure. Yeah. For sure did. Mm -hmm. Which people probably don't know that about him. Yeah. They just don't know anything about him. They just assume, you know. Exactly. Um, they assume, you know, uh, oh, he's never been through nothing. Mm -hmm. it's, they don't know him, you know. Yeah. That's why, you know, you hit a certain age and you've gone through so much in your life as a kid that when you're an adult, this lame bullshit don't matter. Yeah, it don't. You know, we just want to make our money. Our money now, dude. Shit. Yeah. I have everything. Like, I'm still surprised I have a home. To this day, I'm grateful for a shower. Yes. Like, I wake up, I shit. I didn't have showers. The, the park was my shower. Now I got two fucking restrooms in my house. I got beds. Like You have a nice little blue set up on your table. I got a dining room set. Bitch, I can't believe it. I wake up and I'm always like, happy. thank you, God. Amen. Thank you, God. I never ask him for shit, but I'm always thanking him. Thank you, man, for this. Just keep on blessing me. Just he, bless my kids. He never let you go. Never. He never let you go. He didn't. And that's why you are where you are, because you had to go through all of that in order to appreciate the rest of your life. Exactly. You know? It's a wake up call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had a gang of them, but <laughs> <laughs> we get to the one that really fucking affects us. Yeah. And, and we're like, like bitch, okay. it's not going back. Like, to that's me. enough. Enough is yeah. enough. That's enough mm -hmm. is enough. Well, again, thank you, Linwood, yeah, thank you for, for coming sure. on the Color Brown podcast. Yeah. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and follow us on Instagram.